Now, in the previous lecture, we understand how we can dispatch the action inside the React project. We call the dispatch method inside this handle submit event handler and execute the register success action. Now, what I want, when I execute the register success action, I want to change the store value. As well as, I want to create the action creator instead of passing this object to this dispatch method. So, in this lecture, we're going to learn how to create action creator for this React application. And I'm going to show you how you can print the current store value inside the console. So, let me show you how you can do it. As you know, when you reload your browser, you will get your initial store value. You will get this value from this statement. I'm going to have this statement inside this index.js file. I'm using store object to get the current value of the store. Now, what I want, when I click on the login button, I want to change the value of this is login key and print the current store value. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to back to my login. Instead of this object, I'm going to create action creator for this dispatch method. Using action creator, you can simply pass your function as a parameter. Let me show you. I'm going to back to the action.js file and here I'm going to create a simple action for the register button. So, I'm going to create here a command and say register action. And just down here, I'm going to simply say constant register action is equal to pass your parenthesis inside that. Then I'm going to pass here arrow function like this. Don't forget to export this function so you can use it in your other files. Just like this. This is your simple action creator. Inside this parenthesis, I'm going to pass a parameter text. Or you can pass here payload. We're going to pass value to this payload when we call this function. Inside this function, or you can say inside this action creator, I'm going to return the object with the type. And here I'm going to pass my action types. As you know, I have these action types file here and using this object I can access my different action types. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this register success action type inside my actions. So here I'm going to simply say action types dot register success. Specify here comma and then I'm going to specify my payload. Payload is going to be this parameter. So I'm going to copy this parameter and specify that here. Or you can just simply pass here this value just like this. It will create a payload key and pass value to it. Both are identical. Let me save this file back to my login and here instead of this object I can just simply pass my action creator here. So inside this login at the top here I'm going to simply say import and then I'm going to call this register action like this from double dot forward slash then I'm going to specify double dot again forward slash specify container and inside that, I have the actions file. I'm going to specify that here. Just out of that, I'm going to copy this register action. Instead of this object, I'm going to specify this register action here. And in the parenthesis, I need to pass my payload. This time, I'm going to pass here payload action creator. Let me save this file. Let me reload the browser. And when I click on the login button, this will execute the type register success with the payload action creator. So you can notice. I don't need to pass here object as a parameter to this dispatch method. Using action creator, I can dispatch any action. Now just for the example, I'm using this register success action to this login button. In the future lectures, I'm using this action to register a new user. What I want, when I click on the login button, I want to change the value of this default store. At this time, the initial value of this is login is false. When I click on the login button, I want to change it to true. So to do that, I'm going to back to my reducer first. And here, instead of this false, inside this action type, I'm going to change this to true. And just for that, I'm going to back to my login.js. And what I want, I want to print my current store value inside my console. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to call a hook, use store. I'm going to call this use store hook from the React Redux module. With this hook, you can get your current store value. So just down here, you just need to specify here, constant store is equal to use store. I'm going to call this hook and initialize that to this variable. Just down here, I'm going to say here console.log and print the current store value. So I'm going to say here store.get state. Let me save this file, reload the browser and when I click on the login, you can notice is state is now equal to true. This is going to change the store value to true. So as I said earlier, you can only change your current store value using dispatch method. 
Now, once you understand how to change the value of the store using dispatch method, let me finish my reducer function. As you know, here I just have the one case for the register success. Let me create my rest of the cases using these action types. Here, just down here, I'm going to add my second case. This time, I'm going to specify action type dot register fail. Then I'm going to specify here return statement and inside it, inside this return statement, I'm going to simply return the current state using spread operator. And then I'm going to say here is login is going to be false. Now let me change this login to false. Just out of that, I'm going to create another case here with the action type login success. If the user specifies the valid login credential, I'm going to return the current state. Then I'm going to return is login true. And then I'm going to return user payload dot user. Right now, I don't have any value to this payload user. I'm going to specify that when I create the login success action creator. Just out of that, I'm going to create here another case. Action type is going to be login fail. If the login fail, I'm going to return my initial state and then I'm going to return is login is going to be false. And then I'm going to return user is going to be now. And at the last, I'm going to create my last case action types dot logout. When the user click on the logout button, I'm going to return the initial state with is login false and user is going to be not. Now, let me explain this reducer. In the first case, when the user click on the register button, I'm going to return the initial state with the is login false. In the second case, when the user fail to register, I'm going to return the same data. In the third case, when the user click on the login button with a valid credential, I'm going to change this is login to true. So the user can access restricted data. And along with that, I'm going to add a user parameter to the state so we can access the user data. Just out of that, if the user try to log in and fail, I'm going to return the initial state with the is login false and return the user null. Just out of that, in the action type, if the user click on the login button, I'm going to return the initial state, then is login is going to be false and user is going to be null. Future lectures may be difficult to understand. So if you have any question, comment me down.